Right. Let's take it back to the NBA because there was big news there. Drama in Hollywood. Yeah, Pacers. Lakers, that's right. <laughs> Jay Will's here. He's fired up. LeBron was fired up before this one, taking on the Pacers. But we'll take you to the fourth, 734 remaining. Russell Westbrook. Now, just watch him right here. He spins a little bit, takes the jumper, misses it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Watch the focus on Westbrook on defense. Blow right by him, looks a little lackadaisical right there. The ball works its way around to Karis LeVert, who blows right by him. Uh, he does Hook not look in. lackadaisical. He, he, he's not even on the court. Yeah, yeah. He's not he on wasn't the court. On the, and he was on the bench for the rest of the game. And then here's LeVert right here, nailing the three. Now, next possession, Lakers down. LeBron looking for the three. It's a brick. Tough night for the Lakers. They lose 111-104. Listen to LeBron after the game. How was Russ after the game? Is that the sort of thing that bothers him? Um, <laughs> have you followed Russ throughout his career? Not as close as you have, probably. Okay. Have you followed Russ throughout this season? Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you think that would bother Russ not being in the late game? Okay. Great answer. Boy, you can cut that tension with a knife, right? With regards to Westbrook, by the way, this is really interesting. With regard to him being benched, our Lakers reporter Dave McMenamin reported after the game, one source close to the situation described the message from management to the staff as, you got to do what you got to do. Now, he also wrote, quote, reporters weren't the only people Westbrook avoided after the game. He had already vacated the locker room by the time his teammates were finished showering, sources told the ESPN, foregoing any post-game yeah. discussion with the team. Now, we welcome in Jay Will to the, Jay Will to the show. And Jay Will, that is so key to me right there. Because right there, you got somebody, he's just walking out of the game, vacating the locker room. You know, I think a lot of fans hear that and they say, wow, why is that happening? What's going on? What, was, what do you think was behind Westbrook's benching well, and, and what you're seeing right now in Hollywood? Well, obviously, the video shows a lack of defensive effort after a missed shot, right? And that's something where, if you're Frank Vogel, uh, you can only coach effort so much. Mm -hmm. You need your players to do it. I want people to think about this for one second. In a span of five days... We've had LeBron James, after an embarrassing loss to the Nuggets, where they got blown out, didn't talk to the media, left early. Now, five days later, we have Russell Westbrook, their other star player, do the same. Internally, there's something massive happening here. Mm. Now, I don't think the personnel fits. It doesn't seem to work to me. Frank Vogel will probably be the scapegoat. But when you start looking at pieces and how it works out defensively, what this team needs, I don't think if you bring Phil Handy in or David Fisdale, that's going to yeah. change how this team is being seen. The pieces just don't fit. You have an old team that defensively they were together a couple years ago when they won a championship that fit the way they actually wanted to play from Frank Vogel's perspective. Now you bring an older team in that doesn't have the same defensive-minded players on the team, and that's why they rank 27th in points allowed per game. Yeah, okay, so then if, if that's the case, I'm sure Lakers fans are watching this right now, screaming at the TV. So what do we do about this? How do we fix it, given the personnel we have? You see where trade packages are out there for a guy like Russell Westbrook. You start looking at, at is John Wall and Eric Gordon from Houston. Is that something that you look to go into? You start looking at a lot of viable options. And I'll ask Lakers fans something realistically, too. And I think he's one hell of a talented player. But watching AD over the last couple of years, is he the future face of your franchise? Mm. Like, that's a legit question because the best ability is availability. Yeah. And for AD, you're always wondering, like, your injuries is always something that's happening with you. Like, will you be there? So there's a lot of questions looming around. And the last question, who the hell is actually making the decisions? Is that Kurt Rambis? Is that Rob Palenka? Is that Jenny Buss? Is that LeBron James and Rich Paul? There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen here, and there's a lot of frustration around what the hell is going on. Now, you mentioned the scapegoats because when you have a situation like this, there's always a scapegoat. Somebody's going to be blamed. Now, guys, I just want to make sure we have the, the sound on Frank Vogel, right? Okay, after the game, LeBron was asked about the job Frank Vogel was doing. Take a listen. I'm not in that business of, of uh, pointing fingers or, or pointing blame or trying to uh, put a quote at the end or at the start of somebody's uh, someone's commentator of what they feel, you know, our coach staff or, or Frank is or where Russ is or where I'm at or AD. Um, if it's not positive for me, I, I'm, it's, not my, it's not my lane. I'm not, a, I'm not a negative person. You got something to, to ask me besides trying to on somebody I ain't supposed to. Hence why he didn't talk after the Nuggets game.
because obviously he was livid and he didn't want to say anything that would demean the franchise or the direction that they were trying to go. But is Vogel going to be the head coach for the Lakers going forward? I have no idea. No. I really, I really don't know. I'm not going to sit up here on national TV and tell you that Frank Vogel is going to be fired. I, but I, what I am telling you is that everything is on the table. Mm-hmm. I don't think changing the head coach will make other players play harder. He won a damn championship two years ago. This comes from internal. Like, when you go for a guy like Russell Westbrook and you trade guys like Kyle Kuzma, KCP, Montrez Harrell, you can't re-sign Alex Caruso, you lose depth. And now we're seeing this team don't have depth and they can't play D. I think you go personnel first. Yeah, I'm never one to write off LeBron, but I do not know how this team makes a serious run. I just don't see it. But see, so you say that, and uh-huh. then they beat the Utah Jazz. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, like, you <laughs> see true. glimpses of what mm-hmm. they can be when there is a sense of urgency defensively and they right. all buy in, but that has not been what you've seen consistency from this team. Okay, so maybe that sense of urgency picks up in the next game. We'll have to see. Jay Will, thank mm-hmm. you so much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.